that, that would be awesome for it. Thank you so much. Uh, the Insight has a great, great question. He says, when was the moment you realized hip hop wasn't a fad and was here to stay? And thank you, Marlon Cozy. Good looking out. Much love to you, Doc. Um, man, I think I'm going to have to say when we got into it, shit. <laughs> about about 80, 84, when um, 83, 84, because we had made some uh, underground records and I, we made uh, we made lovers, and we got a deal from some, from Epic. That kind of solidified it for me because we were the first ones to get a we were the first one to do an album on the West Coast, and we were the first ones to get an album deal, okay, a major deal. And um, but meanwhile, everybody was popping up popping up around us, and it was like, okay, this ain't going nowhere no time soon. And it, no matter what, no matter how much it was growing. There still were skeptics that did not want to buy into it because it was all controlled by kids. You think about this, man. Even the highest level of rap. At the Good looking out, OG Steve. Good looking out, OG Steve. Well, Rocks in the building. Um, at, the, at that time, the, the, the oldest executives in the game was guys like me and Russell. Okay? We were the oldest guys in the, in the game. So... Why would I think, you know, how did, how did Larkin Arnold, how, how did Gerald Busby, how did all these other people miss it? And there were so many major labels that would not touch rap for years. Uh, BET wouldn't even play the mute, play, play videos for a while. Okay. Yeah, they used to play it when I was coming up, they were playing at like one, two in the morning, dude. Right. Like two hour block, you could catch hip hop. They didn't, they, even the people, even our own people didn't believe in it. And it, it became a situation where, oh, y'all don't believe in this? We gonna make we gonna make y'all believe, and that's what that's how that's how it kind of jumped off. You don't believe in it? Oh, we don't care if you don't believe. We don't we, we don't need you because at that time we had the secondary market. The record industry has always had two markets: had the primary market and the secondary market, and that was for independent. The primary was for the majors, and the independent and the independent uh, record labels had the secondary market. You also had two different types of radio stations. You had P1s, P2s. P1s were your heavy hitters like KISS FM. Uh, I think K-Day was a, a P1. But then you also had your P2s, like 99.1 out in uh, San Bernardino, some other stations. And those P2s was giving us breaks that the P1s weren't giving us. But after a while, we was making so much noise on the P1s, the P, on the P2s, the P1s had to come online. And when you start making money, <laughs> what who uh, everybody wanted to be your friend, and that's just how it jumped off. Everybody started feeling like they was behind, it was getting behind, uh, behind the eight ball or behind in the game because the game was changing. And we still had a lot of good artists back in the eighties, and you know, in the eighties, Mike was still here, Prince was still kicking ass, so nobody was willing to jump, jump on the bandwagon, but. Um, they were it was start take it started taking more serious. You started giving some real numbers, and like Clarence Avon says, "Hey, it's a numbers game. If the numbers make sense, I'm in." Boom. Uh, tell us about Charles Wright Watts Rhythm Band. Charles Wright <laughs> Rhythm Band, 103rd Street Band, right out of uh, Watts, California. <laughs> Express yourself, Love Land. Um, they were a local band, man. That just got got a couple of good hits, you know. And I never thought he could sing that good because he, he sounded like he remind me a homeboy from the uh, Intruders. They never did have a great tone, but they could sing, okay. And uh, Charles Charles became a regular at, at, at my other club, Club Hall of Fame at Hollywood Park Casino, and he was making a comeback because after a while, uh, them, them express yourself that them express yourself checks that Dre and them got made uh, brought him back. Oh, so he's the original Express Yourself. Yeah. Example, he, he, know that, okay. Express Yourself, yeah. Yeah, Express Yourself to your full capability while I'm living in a correctional facility. Yes, sir. Same same thing. You know, so a lot of times those type of records, those that the success of a new group will give you a whole new life. And that's what I've been, I'm, I'm saying. I'm just, that's what I said earlier. When you do movies, podcasts, or um, somebody put somebody stand on your club at Super Bowl, you get a whole new whole new level of love. And oh shit, oh that's what it, that's what that's about. And you got to be ready to move. You can't be hard. Oh, he didn't give me a check, so I ain't gonna do nothing. Hell no. Nah. You wait on somebody to give you a check. <laughs> you, I'll tell you what you do. Put both hands out. Uh, 
let somebody shit in one hand and put a check in the other. See which one fill up the fastest. <laughs> it's probably gonna be the one with that shit. <laughs> 